are a few, so as a nature writer, I have to give you some environmental stories. Um, communities that are the re like recipients of, of coal ash um, from mountaintop removal, the mountaintop removal itself, and maybe it's reported, but somehow the reporting is not. Uh, my major professor, Bill Kittredge, believes that it, that our most urgent communal enterprise, he says, is to find the story, like this, the story that we all need to hear. And when we find that, that all of our systems, our political systems, all of our systems will fall into place. And so that's why I'm a writer. I'm looking for that story. And I've read so many stories about mountaintop removal. I've visited it myself. And yet, I mean, we are blowing the tops off the oldest mountains in the world. West Virginia, Kentucky, East Tennessee, how it could, <laughs> hydrofracking. So I know these aren't under, I know these are hmm. well reported stories, but they continue, so we have to keep reporting them. Um, I will say, on the, on the infectious disease level, I think Lyme disease is an incredibly under reported story. The CDC doesn't even believe in chronic Lyme disease. So if you get bitten by a tick and you get a bullseye rash, you can have a round of antibiotics and you're home free. But if you, if a person doesn't know that a tick bit them and then they're, they're sicker and sicker and the years pass and they're sicker, the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, doesn't recognize that. We're in a Lyme epidemic in this country and it's, you, you read nothing about it. It's totally underreported. Let me think what else. I think child sexual abuse is underreported. Now, some of these are, you know, social justice issues. Um, let me keep thinking here. I would have said climate change, but, but I think that's changing. But I will say this, the resistance the resistance of the American people toward oppression and toward uh, ignorance about environmental issues is severely underreported in this country. Our mainstream media is not reporting the alternative systems being set up and the people who are actively, daily resisting corporate control. Some of them in prison, like Tim to Christopher, who tried to he, he, it was an oil lease sale out in Utah, and he bid and didn't have the money. Later, raised the money, but he didn't have the money, so he got sent to prison for false, false representation. So I think that's severely underreported. Pick up a newspaper and you're seeing all these murders and these horrible things, but what you're not seeing are the stories of hope and uh, I mean um, that's it hope that a, that a man Bill McQuinty is that his name he lives on the outskirts of St. Laura of Canton he he runs a nursery where he's keeping alive heirloom varieties of apples you know there is a revolutionary right among us he doesn't look like a rev revolutionary but he's devoted his entire life to being a part of this food system that makes sense and keeping these ancient varieties of apples alive. 